president um, understands the power of, he, of his words when he speaks this way, that people, it, people may hear his words very differently than he intends them to be? Um, I don't know if he doesn't understand the power of his words uh, or if, if he does very well understand the power of his words and he's trying to incite some sort of chaos or our anarchy to understand the power of their words. And uh, when they say these things, people not only listen, but they respond. And so some of the things that I've heard the president say over the course of the last several years, um, especially at the debate even last week, I, I would say I think that it's not just a dog whistle, but sometimes even a rallying cry. What should the president be saying right now? You know what, a decent human being would pick up the phone and say, are you okay? How's your family doing? That's what a decent human being does. That's what Joe Biden did. You said the president is, com is complicit with the extremists. Well, anyone who uh, gives safe harbor to or encouragement to is complicit. Each time he has tweeted about me, each time that he has said liberate Michigan and said I should negotiate with the very people who are arrested because they're good people, that incites more domestic terror. Could Donald Trump be aiding and abetting, you know, basically domestic terrorism? If this were virtually anyone else, Joy, their name would be added to the subject line of the investigation they would be looked at for instigating violence, for aiding and abetting, for conspiring. What is the relationship in your view between Donald Trump's coddling of white nationalism and saying things like liberate Michigan and what we're seeing today, if you think there is a connection? Yeah, let's, let's connect those dots, Joy, because the dots show us that our commander in chief is essentially becoming a radicalizer. Well, here we go again, because as it turns out, these guys who supposedly planned this kidnapping plot were in fact anti-Trump, anti-police, far-left anarchists. Were literally violently thrown out of there. Okay. It was an order following police officer. Okay. Order followers are not here to protect you because you are not going to achieve freedom by continuing to support these people under the erroneous belief that they're here to protect you. They are oppressing you for a paycheck, all right? And you need to wake up and realize this because if you're still supporting law enforcement, dude, you, you got it backwards. It's Trump is not your friend, dude. And it's, it amazes me that people actually, like, believe that when he's shown over and over and over again that he's a tyrant. God, here we go again. It's really hard to describe the feeling that I get when I watch these powerful people in the media accuse their political opposition of what they're literally actively engaged in right now. For example, when the media and the Democrats said that if Donald Trump questioned election results, it would be an attack on democracy. Yet, what have we watched them do for the last four years? The media has accused Trump of being a racist, a sexist, an autocratic dictator who's running concentration camps at the border which, by the way, led to several attacks on ICE facilities by left-wing groups that were promoted on supposed news networks like CNN. These white people are the Redneck Revolt. Now, they aren't a bunch of rednecks revolting against equality like I first thought. They're actually rednecks revolting against the rednecks who are revolting against equality. I'll explain. <laughs> They've even said that Trump and his supporters are an existential threat, giving their violent mobs all the justification they need for violence. And don't ever forget that the left has been using violence and intimidation since before even the election. Remember San Jose, where mobs of Democrat Bernie supporters targeted Trump supporters and beat them up, all while the police just stood by and watched on the orders of the mayor. Or when that Democrat Bernie supporter almost assassinated half the GOP Senate. Or how about that Dallas police ambush that was carried out at a BLM rally and resulted in five dead officers. I certainly don't remember anybody in the media questioning if their rhetoric incited that attack. So yeah, these guys are anything but Trump supporters. Supporters, but that won't stop the media or the Democrats. It really reminds me of the Tea Party era when the media was scrambling to blame any mass shooting that occurred on the Tea Party, constantly pouncing on these stories and then turning out to be completely wrong. The gaslighting of America continues. That's all for this one. Hit that like button, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all next one. 
When you see what's going on in our country right now, there's plenty to be concerned about. Social unrest is making life very uncomfortable and it could quickly get worse. These are realistic dangers, so don't let yourself be caught unprepared. Here's what to do right now. Go to www.preparewithdronetech.com and start building your emergency food supply today. The experts at My Patriot Supply are the only people I trust and use. And right now, you can save $100 off a full four-week supply of delicious, nutritious meals the whole family will love. My Patriot Supply makes it easy to be prepared at all times. And saving $100 off a life-saving four-week supply of food is too good to pass up. The second half of 2020 is gonna be wild so go to preparewithdronetech.com and get ready right now that's preparewithdronetech.com do it now